The story begins with a high school student named Taki, waking up in the body of a girl named Mitsuha. He looks around and first tries to process the situation he is in. After realizing he is dreaming and currently in a girl's body, his curiosity kicks in and like any other man of culture, he starts to feel up the melons. Just then, Mitsuha's younger sister, Yotsuha, comes. On seeing her elder sister playing with her melons, with a disgusted face, she tells her sister to get ready and come for breakfast. Taki wonders who this little girl was. He stands in front of the mirror and is stunned to see how real his body looks. The scene shifts to the next day. During breakfast, both Granny and Yotsuha are glad to see Mitsuha is acting normal today, unlike yesterday. Mitsuha doesn't understand what they mean by it. She turns on the TV and watches the news about a month away visit of a comet that appears only once every 1,200 years. It must be going to be a breathtaking view, so everyone is looking forward to it. After breakfast, Mitsuha wears her ribbon and soon after, together with Yotsuha goes to school. After dropping Yotsuha to her elementary school, Mitsuha meets up with her friends, Tessie and Sayaka. On seeing unlike yesterday, Mitsuha has her hair fixed, both of them are glad to see it. Tessie even advises Mitsuha to get herself exorcised, because yesterday, she was a total chaos. As Mitsuha tries to ask what he means, just then they have an encounter with their classmates. For some reason, the classmates don't like Mitsuha and make fun of her by saying, how cute to see the daughter of the mayor and the son of his contractor sticking together. Ignoring him as she walks away, the mayor, also her father scold Mitsuha and tell her to walk with her back straight. Mitsuha gets embarrassed as her classmates laugh at her. After arriving at the school, while the first class is going on, she notices a strange message written in her textbook. For the next paragraph, the teacher tells Mitsuha to start reading it. On seeing Unlike Yesterday, Mitsuha quickly responded to her name. The teacher along with others is glad to see she at least remembers her name today. Mitsuha wonders what she means by it. During lunch, she asks Tessie if he is the one who wrote the strange message in her book, but he refuses. Mitsuha gets to know that yesterday she forgot where her desk and locker were, as well as she had a bedhead and no ribbon. Mitsuha is confused because she doesn't remember anything at all, but shares about a strange dream she had as if she was living someone else's life. Mitsuha feels so strange because she is already living such a pathetic life in this town, and now these things happening. When Sayaka remind her about the ritual dance, Mitsuha goes into more despair. She is done with this town and wants to live in Tokyo. Sayaka also agrees that their town is small and suffocating. There is no bookstore or dentist, the train comes every two hours, and every convenience store closes every 9 p.m. Tessie is fed up with them complaining and asks if they want to drink coffee at a cafe. Both of them get very excited on knowing there is a cafe in their town but only to end up drinking a coffee from a vending machine. The lie is so painful that Mitsuha just goes home while Tessie and Sayaka hang out. In Mitsuha's home, she and Yotsuha are braiding cords with their grandmother. Braiding cords have a very important part in their family. Mitsuha has inherited her mother's family name, Miyamizu, which is also the god name their family has been worshipping for generations. And just like for the past 200 years, they will do the ritual and perform the duty of their family as a tribute to their god Miyamizu. Mitsuha's father, Toshiki married into Mitsuha's mother's family and inherited their name. But after she died, he didn't want to be part of this religious stuff and wanted to pursue becoming a politician. But Granny didn't approve of it, and so with no other choice, Toshiki left Mitsuha and Yotsuha in Granny's care to pursue his aim. The scene shifts to Tessie's house, where his father being the owner of the construction company is having a drink with Toshiki and coming up with a plan to win the upcoming elections. Tessie is hearing their conversation and can smell corruption. After having dinner, he meets up with Sayaka to watch Mitsuha's and Yotsuha's ritual dance. This traditional dance has been passed on by Mitsuha's ancestors and is performed every year during this time of the season. And when it's done, they both sit down and chew on rice for some time. This is to make the oldest alcohol in the world, which is known as Kuchikami Sake. After chewing it thoroughly, she slowly spits it out in a box. 
Her classmates are grossed out and wonder how she can do something so embarrassing. Mitsuha hears them, but still keeps her composure and seals the box to let it from it. After changing the dress, she walks home with Yotsuha. Yotsuha can see her sister is bothered by her classmates and comforts her. She knows Mitsuha wants to live in Tokyo, so she suggests her to earn money by selling the Kuchikami sake and labeling it as an alcohol made by a high school maiden. Just imagining how it would look, Mitsuha discards the idea. She is sick of this town and her life. She doesn't want to do these religious things and screams she wants to live in Tokyo as a hot guy. The scene shifts to yesterday, when Mitsuha wakes up in Taki's body. She is confused as to where she is and feels something down inside her pant. On touching it, she freaks out and is amazed at how real everything looks. She is called by Taki's father and told to quickly go to school after finishing breakfast. After he leaves, a notification comes and it's a message from Tsukasa. But before she changes to her uniform, she wants to use the restroom. After doing the deed, she asks herself why things look so real in this dream. She gets ready, and on seeing the view she is lost in the beauty. Just like she wanted, there are tall buildings, loads of people, and so many cars. She can't believe she is really in Tokyo. After a lot of struggle in finding the school, Mitsuha arrives there by the time it's lunch. She is greeted by Tsukasa and meets up with Shin on the roof. Both of them are amazed to know Taki lost his way to school. They wonder what's wrong with him because today he is speaking in a dialect as well as sitting in a strange way. After school, they stop by the cafe, and Mitsuha can't believe such a heavenly place really does exist. But she is stunned to see how expensive it is. Since it's just a dream she just buys whatever she wants. A notification comes and she gets to know she is late for the part-time job. However, she doesn't know where it is. On hearing this, both Tsukasa and Shin are stunned to say anything. After arriving at the restaurant, Mitsuha is making a lot of mistakes like taking too much time to write down the orders as well as mixing up the orders. Because of all this, she is being scolded by the chefs. One of the customers complains about a toothpick in his pizza and asks how will the restaurant compensate if he had eaten it by mistake. Mitsuha is confused and tells him it's an Italian restaurant. But the customer gets angry and then another waitress named Okudera takes over the situation. After some time, when the restaurant is closed, Okudera comforts Mitsuha to not feel bad because the guy was at total fault. Another waitress points at her skirt being torn, and Okudera realizes it must have been that pervert from before. Mitsuha takes Okudera to a room and tells her to take off her skirt. Okudera freaks out, but soon the misunderstanding clears out. Seeing how creatively he fixed her skirt, Okudera is flattered. She never thought she would see a feminine side of Taki and thanks him for his help. At home, Mitsuha can't believe how real this dream is. She goes through Taki's phone and sees a lot of photos of his friends along with Okudera. Since there is a diary on this phone, she also journals her day in it. Afterwards, she goes to sleep. The following day, Taki wakes up and is stunned to read his diary. He asks Shin and Tsukasa if they are the ones who wrote it, but they refuse. At his workplace, he gets surrounded by other male staff who are furious at him for walking home together with Okudera-senpai. He swears he doesn't know a thing they are talking about. But when Okudera comes in and winks at Taki, the others get furious. A few days later in the Itomori town, Mitsuha wakes up to see her hand filled with questions asking, What are you? After Yotsuha comes and asks if she is today not going to feel her melons, Mitsuha freaks out and wonders why she said that. At school, everyone for some reason is staring at her. So Sayaka reminds her about the things she did yesterday. During the art class, the usual classmates were making fun of her, so she got pissed at them and threatened them to not mess with her again. Mitsuha is confused as to what's happening. In her notebook, yet again there are weird notes have been written. It's at this moment, both of them realize they are switching bodies. Days pass by, with Taki and Mitsuha waking up in each other's bodies. Both of them eventually understand they are of the same age attending high school. They switch bodies randomly, a few times a week, and their memory of them switching fades as soon as they wake up. So to keep up to date, 
they start leaving a report of their day on each other's phone. To make sure they do not affect each other's life, they decide to set some rules, things that aren't allowed by the other to do it. From Mitsuha's side, she wants Taki to stay away from boys, keep the legs together, and don't feel up her melons. From Taki's side, he doesn't want Mitsuha to waste his money, don't talk like a girl, and don't get late for the part-time job. But despite it, they both aren't able to suppress their habits and personalities and keep living each other lives in their own way. Taki playing Mitsuha's life more manly that is impressing other boys as well as other girls. And Mitsuha living the life of a city boy she always wanted and eventually getting close to Okudera. One morning, Taki yet again wakes up in Mitsuha's body. Today he decides to act more mature and respect Mitsuha's body. But in the end, he just couldn't resist it. After Yotsuha tells him to get ready, together with Granny, they both head on a little journey to their god shrine. As their destination is a few miles ahead, Taki being considerate, gives a piggyback ride to Granny. But soon realizes it's not his manly body anymore, and has a bit of trouble walking while carrying her. On the way, the Granny tells them about their god Miyamizu, and how the braided cords they make are also known as the god's art, which represents the flow of time itself. Every time they put work in twisting, tangling, and joining the threads, all the time spent is stored in the braided cords. After having some rest and drinking tea, they soon continue their journey. After walking another mile, they are finally able to see the large crater within which the shrine of their god resides. They come across a stream that separates their world from the other world. By crossing it, they will enter the other world. In order to return to their own world, they have to leave behind something important to them. And for them, it's the Kuchikami Sake they made in the ritual dance, as it represents half of them. After putting it inside, they walk home. On the way they see the Itomori Lake, and the view is stunning. Yotsuha believes they will be able to see the comet clearly from here. In a confused tone, Taki asks what comet. Hearing this, the granny says, Mitsuha, it seems you are still dreaming. Taki wakes up on the other side, and wonders why he is crying. He checks his phone and finds out he has a date with Okudera senpai After getting ready, Taki somehow manages to arrive on time. Okudera suddenly appears and while grabbing his hand begins their date. On the other side, Mitsuha wakes up. She remembers the date she set up for Taki and wonders if he will be happy. But then she suddenly starts crying and asks the reason she feels so bad. Back in Tokyo, Taki and Okudera are spending time together but he doesn't know a thing about what to do on dates. Mitsuha has left some notes on what to do in such situations, but because she has two never gone on a date they aren't very helpful. By this time, Okudera notices something is different about Taki. In the museum, Taki notices the photo of Itomori Lake. He doesn't remember the time he went with Granny and Yotsuha, but feels a bit curious about it. Afterwards, when he asks Okudera where they should have dinner, Okudera says it's enough for today. She heard a rumor that he used to have a crush on her, and that's why she accepted the date. But now, she can see he likes someone else. Taki blushes and refuses there is no one. Okudera can see he has definitely changed but doesn't force him to tell her who the girl is. She thanks him for spending his time with her, and after bidding him goodbye she leaves. Taki reads the message left by Mitsuha, in which she has written about the comet that will be visible today. Taki wonders what comet she is talking about. He decides to tell her about how the day went, so he dials the number she has left. On the other side, Mitsuha receives a call. She picks it up and it's from Tessie. He wants the three of them to see the comet together so he invites her to the festival. After some time, when she arrives there, both of them are stunned to see Mitsuha's short hair. They are worried wondering if everything is alright, or maybe she broke up with her secret boyfriend. They arrive on an open field and finally witness the comet. On the other side, Taki has been calling Mitsuha multiple times but she isn't picking up. With no other choice, he decides to tell her about the date when he next time switches the body. However, the day never came. As days pass by, Taki keeps waiting when he'll get the chance to switch the bodies. After three weeks of patiently waiting, he has enough and decides to meet Mitsuha. 
He doesn't remember the town's name but whatever he remembers about the scenery he experienced, he tries his best to come up with a drawing that somewhat is similar to Itomori Lake. When it's finally done, he puts it in his bag and heads to the station. There he unexpectedly meets Tsukasa and Okadera. Taki asks him why he is here when he only told him to cover his shifts for him. Tsukasa assures Taki, Shin is doing that part. As for joining him on the trip, he was worried for him as he has been acting very weirdly for the past month. And when he told Okudera she was also worried and wanted to meet this online friend of his. Taki doesn't like how they are babysitting him, but he has no other choice. After changing the train, they asked him about the girl and where she lives. But Taki tells them he doesn't know where she lives nor she is picking up her phone. All he has is the drawing he drew. Throughout the day, Taki shows his drawings to people and asks them if they know about such a place. One town after another he tries his best, but even after hours of hard work, he is not successful. For dinner, the three of them have a bowl of ramen in a nearby shop, where the owner happens to see Taki's drawing, and immediately recognizes it's the Itomori town because her husband was born there. Taki now remembers the name, and with excitement asks if the town is nearby. On hearing this, both Tsukasa and Okudera also remember the name and are in shock. The owner takes them to Itomori, where Taki is in a state of confusion. A major part of the village has been wiped out from its existence. The houses, trains, and buildings, mostly everything have been converted to dust. Tsukasa, in a bit of a panic tone, tells Taki, it's just not possible for the online friend of his to live here. After all, it has been three years since the incident happened. Taki now remembers the comet he saw three years ago. But he still doesn't believe it because he has the notes Mitsuha wrote on his phone. But as he takes out his phone, all the notes start getting deleted and in the end just disappear as if they never existed. They visit a nearby library where Taki does more research on the incident. Tsukasa and Okudera also share what they know about it. Three years ago, in October, it was an autumn festival when this incident happened. Many people from throughout the town were gathered there, and it was at that place that a piece of comet broke apart and struck the town. Over 500 people died, about one-third of the town's population. Taki goes through the list of deceased and finds Tessie and Sayaka's names. A few pages later there is Mitsuha and her family's name as well. Okudera doesn't believe it and says it's definitely some kind of mistake. Because no way a person who died three years ago has been talking to him. Taki starts to have some headaches. He knows he was talking to Mitsuha three weeks ago, but now he doesn't know anymore. In an inn, Tsukasa asks Okudera about Taki's story and whether she believes him or not. Okudera shares that she started liking Taki because of his recent change. Taki was already a nice guy, but recently he was even more. But maybe because of this sudden change, she thinks there is someone whom he met after which he changed. That's the only part she can believe in Taki's story. Inside the room, Taki is losing hope and thinking maybe he is just delusional and all the things he experienced was just a dream after all. Now, he can't even remember Mitsuha's name anymore. Just then, Okudera enters the room. She sits down and asks Taki about the braided cord on his wrist. Taki doesn't remember who gave it to him but wears it as a lucky charm. Because of this, Taki also remembers when someone told him how the cords represent the flow of time itself. He starts to remember the shrine he visited with Granny and Yotsuha. He wonders if that shrine really exists. Tomorrow while Taki is asleep, he hears Mitsuha's voice asking if he remembers her. He wakes up, and after leaving a message, he heads out to the shrine with the owner. After arriving at a certain point, the owner gives some food to Taki for his journey. As it begins to rain, Taki takes shelter in a cave and tries to figure out the path he should take. After deciding, even when it's still raining, he continues his journey and finally finds the shrine. Taki has a sudden rush of relief. He is glad to know it was not a dream after all. Taki approaches the shrine and comes across the edge of the next world. He crosses it and goes inside the shrine where there are two sake he and Yotsuha had put. Looking at the bottle's condition, he understands that his and Mitsuha's timelines were different. 
He pours himself some of it from Mitsuha's bottle and before drinking, wishes to have one more chance to switch places with her. Afterwards, as he stands up, he ends up slipping and sees a comet drawn on the ceiling of the cave. And then, something strange starts to happen. He goes through all the past events that happened in Mitsuha's life. Starting from when she was born, to when her mother got sick and died, to when Mitsuha's father had an argument with Granny and left the family to pursue his career in politics, to when Mitsuha first switched body, to when she went to Tokyo, to when she cut her hair and to when the comet broke apart and struck the town. Taki suddenly wakes up in Mitsuha's body. He is emotional and grateful for this opportunity. He just couldn't resist feeling up Mitsuha's melons. Yotsuha freaks out and leaves for school without her sister. After Taki gets ready, he watches the news and confirms today is the day the comet will strike. Just then, Granny enters the room and notices it's not her granddaughter. Taki is surprised to hear it. After watching her granddaughter's recent behaviors, Granny started to remember the time she used to switch bodies as well. And not just her, Mitsuha's mother and also their ancestors used to switch bodies. Taki tells her about the comet and about the tragedy going to happen. After this, Taki goes to the school, where both Tessie and Sayaka are stunned to see her short hair and ask if anything bad happened. Taki also wonders why Mitsuha shortened the hair when it looked better before, but now it's not the time to think about that. He tells them about the comet. Having friends like Tessie and Sayaka has benefits. No matter how absurd you sound, they are willing to put their trust in you and are ready to go along with you. They come up with a plan to use a bomb to evacuate the people. Because no one is going to trust them just because they say so. That's why, using the water gel explosives Tessie's father has in his warehouse, they will use the chaos and broadcast an evacuation message throughout the town and tell everyone to head to the Itomori High School which is going to be safe from the comet. Before executing their bombing plan, Taki will first talk to the mayor and try to convince him to evacuate the residents. But if that fails, they will carry out the bombing plan. Thus the role is divided. Taki is in charge of talking to the mayor, Tessie is in charge of planting the bombs and Saika is in charge of broadcasting the message because she is in the broadcast club. Sayaka is freaking out because they are about to commit a crime. But both of them assure it will be fine. The scene shifts to the mayor's office where Taki fails to convince Mitsuha's father. Toshiki doesn't believe anything and calls the comet breaking apart and striking the town absurd. He believes this madness must be from the Miyamizu's side. As he decides to send Taki to the hospital, Taki gets furious and while grabbing his tie he curses him. It's this moment that Toshiki realizes it's not his daughter but someone else. After failing to convince Toshiki, Taki on the way, stops some kids and warns them to immediately leave this town with their family. But they end up getting scared and call him a freak. Yotsuha comes asking what's wrong with you. She is worried for her elder sister, because yesterday Mitsuha suddenly went to Tokyo and now, she is saying absurd things like this. Hearing Mitsuha went to Tokyo, Taki starts to remember something. He understands he is not the one who will save the town but it's Mitsuha. So he borrows Tessie's bicycle and goes towards the Miyamizu shrine. Yesterday, Mitsuha decided to go to Tokyo, making an excuse to her sister that it was a date. On her way, she was nervous, thinking how Taki will react on seeing her. Maybe he'll get angry and won't like it. Maybe it will be too awkward between them, or maybe, just maybe, he'll be a bit happy to see her. With this little bit of hope, she went to the bridge where Taki and Okudera were supposed to meet. But even after hours when she couldn't meet him there, she went to other areas to find him. It was when she was waiting for a train that she saw him and went inside to meet him. Taki was right in front of her, absorbed in reading his notes. With a soft voice, she called his name, but Taki didn't recognize who she was. Mitsuha was sad. As she was about to get off, Taki asked her name and Mitsuha told her name and gave her ribbon to him. Back in the present, Taki finally remembers the girl back then was Mitsuha who came to see him. On the other side, Mitsuha in Taki's body wakes up. She goes to the top of the crater and sees the town is no more. She is devastated and quick to understand she is in the future 
and will die. Soon after, Taki arrives and starts calling her name. Mitsuha can hear Taki but cannot see him. Both of them start calling each other's names and come closer. They are right in front of each other, but yet can't see or feel each other. As the sun is about to set, in the half-light, they miraculously switch bodies and yet again, they are able to see each other. On one side, Taki tries to be as composed as possible. On the other side, Mitsuha is emotional to finally able to see him. She asks him how he got here, and Taki tells her about drinking the sake she made. Mitsuha gets embarrassed and calls him a pervert, and she also remembers about him feeling her chest. Taki apologizes for it and returns the braided cord to her. He held on to it for three years, but it's time to return it. Mitsuha asks how it's looking on her, and Taki blushingly says not so bad. Seeing how bad he is at compliments, both of them share a laugh. Taki tells her about everything that is going to happen, as well as the plan with Tessie and Sayaka. Just so they don't forget each other's name this time, Taki writes his name on her palm and as Mitsuha is about to as well, she just disappears. Taki wanted to tell her that no matter wherever you are in the world, he'll find her. He promises he will not forget her name. He keeps calling her name multiple times and as he is about to write it down, he forgets. He asks himself, who is she, whom he came here to meet? He knows she is someone important to him that he doesn't want to forget about. But Taki gets emotional because he just can't remember her name. On the other side, Mitsuha is trying her best to not forget about Taki's name as well. She keeps calling his name and meets up with Tessie. Before initiating the plan, Tessie once again asks Mitsuha if the comet will really break apart and fall. Mitsuha assures it will. With it, they plant the bomb at the substation. And afterwards, they notify Sayaka to do her part. Soon the bomb explodes, and throughout the town, the electricity goes out. And with it, the comet is so clear, as if the sky is splitting apart. The emergency broadcast begins, with Sayaka informing the residents about the terrorist attack and requesting them to evacuate to the Itomori High School. The tension among people starts to rise and they start to evacuate. In the mayor's office, Toshiki demands his staff who is behind this broadcast. Mitsuha and Tessie are trying their best to tell everyone to evacuate. But suddenly Mitsuha begins to cry because she can't remember Taki's name anymore. Tessie doesn't know the reason, but tells her to get hold of herself and go to the mayor and give one last push to convince her father. As Mitsuha starts running on the other side, the mayor is told about the person responsible for the broadcast and soon after, Sayaka is caught. Eventually, another message is broadcast, requesting everyone to not panic and ignore the warning they just heard. Soon the comet begins splitting apart, and everyone from throughout Japan as well as throughout the world is watching it on the news. On her way, Mitsuha keeps asking what was his name. She begins to panic on seeing the comet breaking apart, and ends up tripping and falling. She looks at her hand to remember his name, but gets emotional on seeing it said, I love you Mitsuha. While crying she calls him an idiot, and asks how is she supposed to remember him with this. Mitsuha runs, and manages to arrive at the mayor's office. Following this, the comet splits into multiple parts. The view is indeed breathtaking, but only until it strikes down and wipes out a major part of the town in just an instant. Back in the present, Taki wakes up and completely forgets about Mitsuha. Five years later, on his way to a job interview, Taki on seeing a girl with a red ribbon for some reason goes after her, but then stops and asks himself, who is he looking for? He gives multiple interviews but couldn't land a job. After this, he has a brief meeting with his friends and congratulates Tsukasa for his engagement. Soon after he receives a message from Okudera and meets up with her. It's just she wanted to see him since she was in the area. As it has been exactly eight years since the tragic incident in Itomori town, she recalls the time the three of them went there. However, Taki doesn't remember it at all. He just remembers him waking up on a mountain there, with no understanding of why he was there. But for some reason, after that, he became curious about the town and started doing research about it. He found out, half of the comet destroyed the town, and miraculously no one was hurt because of an emergency drill conducted. 
but he still wonders why he was so curious about the town even though he didn't know anyone there. Okudera thanks Taki for his time and hopes he'll too find happiness. As it starts to rain, he takes shelter in a cafe, where he hears a couple talking about their marriage. It's Tessie and Sayaka, but he doesn't remember them. Afterwards, as he walks on the bridge, he goes past a woman, not realizing it's Mitsuha. Days pass by, followed by weeks and months. Taki and Mitsuha wake up in their respective apartments, get ready, and head out for their job. On the train, as they finally catch sight of each other, they immediately get off the train and start running towards one another. When they finally meet, they both walk towards each other, hoping for the other to say something. But when no one says or does anything, Taki gathers his courage and asks if by any chance, have they met before? Mitsuha gets emotional and says she also thinks so. If you enjoyed the recap, please consider liking and subscribing this channel. Have a wonderful day ahead.